Today we're going to model, texture, and render a wine bottle in the blender. I'll try to explain each step in detail so that you guys can follow along and achieve the same result, but if I miss any, feel free to comment below. I would clarify that. I have divided this video into four parts, modeling, texturing, lighting, and at last, making the scene ready for render. So we are in the blender now, so you can see we have the default layout and you can see the commands and keys that I'm using here. It is being reflected in my left-hand corner. So first, let's import our reference here. Click on Add, Image, Reference, Import Image. I will just pin this reference in the description. So you can see that the reference is rotated incorrectly. Let me just fix this. Just rotating it to match our front view. Now, you see the profile of this bottle is a circle and extruded along the z-axis. So, we will start with the blocking of the model and then we will further refine and add details to get the final shape. You can add objects from here alternately. You press Shift A. You can see an app up saying Add Menu. From there, you can add different mesh, amateur, and lights extra. So, when you hover over the mesh, you can see there are more objects here that are just basic objects from which we can create more complex models. Going into edit mode, we can scale our circle to match our preference and extrude it along the z-axis just matching the shape of the model. This process is called blocking, which I mentioned earlier. It is making a basic shape of the model. So now to refine the shape, click Ctrl R and add edge loops to the model. There are some open spaces at the bottom and, well, the top. Use F to fill the spaces. Now you can go back to the object model and right press on the shade smooth, which will normalize the faces, add more supporting edge loops and remove these black spots on the model. You can add more details if you want. You can edge loops, clicking on control R. If you hover over the vertical edge loop, you will get a horizontal edge loop. And if you hover on the horizontal edge, you will get a vertical edge loop. Our model is ready and we can start with texturing now. Texturing. Moving forward with the texturing, we need to define the UV maps of the bottle. UV mapping is defining the seams on our model to lay the mesh on a tuning plane so that it is easy to texture it. So, in most of the models, the seams are defined in such a way that it is almost hidden from the camera. I'll just mark the seams on this model from the bottom so the bottom face and from there going to the top and the top face. Now, split the screen and go into UV Editor. So now you can see that it has been laid out properly and we have these edges. So these are the edges that will be the hinges for the 2D layout. Let me just delete these annotations. We're done with the unwrapping now and we'll be moving forward to the texturing. Now split the screen, switch to the shader editor and create a new material. Now if you see the reference here, we have three layers. So we will not copy the same texture as we don't have the mask for the pattern here, but I will tell you the basic layout and help you understand the method, and that has been used in the texturing. So you see, there are three layers, and the first layer is this black layer, a gold layer, and then this mask. We will not copy the same texture, but we'll try to make the same material setup. Moving on, we have a principal BSDF, and a material output we need to first enable to node Wrangler to add on from the references. And now when I press Control Shift T, we can have, you know, the option. So we can import all the texture maps and make PBR setup out of it directly. You can see I have the texture maps here that go into the principal BSDF, which then defines the material property values like roughness, specular, metallic, and more. Other values, and then it goes to the surface, noted surface input of the material output. We will switch to the material editor now. So in Blender, we have four views. First, we have where you can view the mesh of the model. Then there's a solid view where you can view the solidified model. And then there's a material preview, which is a low quality render view. And at last, we have the render preview where we can view the combined result of lighting and animation. Coming back to our material, you can see that there are a lot of imperfections in the model, and that is because the texture is laid out in such a way that it covers the whole UV layout. We can now scale down the texture. You can notice that it's tiled over the model. 
The displacement value is too high. I would just decrease it to 0.2. And let's again match the scale according to our preferences. But we will, you know, only be using this setup as a mask. So we will not need any of the displacements. I will just cut it down. Now to view any node in the shader writer, you can press Control Shift and click. I will just press Shift A and import and color ramp. The clamp the RGB value in black and white data so that we can use it as a mask. Again, I would press Shift A, add a mix shader here. So what does this take the mask? And plugs in the first shift with the input. And that's in the black areas and the second input in the white areas. Okay, so let me explain this more clearly. So if I plug in two principles, BSDF, one orange and one white, you can see the difference here. So in the white areas, the orange color is reflected. In the black areas, the white color is being reflected as I explained earlier. Let's change the orange to black and I will just tweak some of these values. Maybe make layer shinier. You know, the first layer could be shiny and one layer rough to make two different layers. Now let's import this skull mask. I'll press Control T and import the skull mask. You can see that the skull mask is covering the whole model. To correct that, we need to make another UV map and assign some faces, the same as we did before. Now we have a mask, and we can define the materials that get into the black and white areas. Just tweaking some parameters. Let's switch these. We'll just plug in the texture in the white areas. Now we can make some grains with a noise texture. Or we can just plug in a displacement. Now we will make a mask so that we can add a dust material, which will give the bottle an ancient look. We will use a noise texture with a color run and then clamp the values of the color ramp to get the desired result. Then we will add a dust material. With giving the parameters for the same, I think this looks good now. Now let's light up the scene. Set up for render. We will add some foliage in the foreground and the background. We will use some mesh objects to add some grass everywhere and the particle system to make the small grasses. You can find this asset in the Blender, Blender Kit. Using the same mesh, you can create a particular particle system, which you can then use as a small grass in your scene. Just tweaking some parameters to get a good look. Now let's duplicate the grass meshes and place it around our scene. So got it cover up for most of the area. I'll get a half cut wooden tree so that we can place the bottle on that from the Blender Kit asset library. And we will try to achieve volumetrics fog in this scene by adding a cube and then giving an emission to shader it. Basically an emission property so it has a color value and a strength. In the strength, we will be giving a noise texture so it will be distorted and so it would be cloudy emission, which will give an effect of volumetric fog. Lighting. Area for the lighting. I have used HD a forest HDRI, which you can see in the background, and then we have an area like that is limiting the top side of the bottle, and you can also see in the final render. 